Okay, so going on with V2, I, I don't feel like drawing anymore, so we can just talk about it here. Um, V2 incorporates a lot of stuff, including the entire chicken bucket, so we're going to see that. Um, in general, I just kind of originally drew this out and then added more details as we went, but I'll just give you all the details now. So V2, we said is sensory, it busts through for Raymond Rotundum, and then it goes to the infraorbital fissure. And between those two, infraorbital fissure and Raymond Rotundum, that's your PT fossa. So if this is your PT fossa, obviously dangling down, you're going to have the PT ganglia, which you should remember from earlier, the PT ganglia had what coming through it? Uh, ver ver viridian? Vidian nerve? Vidian nerve. Coming off of which petrosal nerve? Greater, lesser, or deep? Uh, deep petrosal. Right, the greater petrosal. <laughs> the greater petrosal <laughs> joins with the deep. That's good. No, you're right, you're right. So we said earlier greater petrosal coming off of which cranial nerve? Seven. Cranial nerve seven. It's going to join with deep petrosal, like we said earlier. That forms the vidian nerve and busts through the PT ganglia. So just to remember, this was the original drawing. Here's your greater petrosal, joining with deep petrosal nerve, the sympathetics, becomes vidian nerve, PT canal, PT ganglia, which if you remember, we said hanging off of V2, which is what we're talking about now. So you can connect those and actually draw one big drawing, which is a good idea. All right, so getting back to it. Here we are. That connection has happened. And one last quick quiz question. What glands are we going to for greater petrosal after we bust through the PT ganglia? Uh, we should go to the nasal, uh, oral, and the lacrimal gland. Nasal, oral mucosa, and lacrimal gland. Okay, good. So we're going to keep going through. And so one thing, it's good to keep in mind for V2. This is all in like 3D. If this is the base of your skull, and if you just kind of think of the trigeminal ganglia being here in your skull, and we're busting anteriorly. So we're moving forward like that. So that's superior, this will be inferior, this is anterior. So if you keep that in mind, you can incorporate the chicken bucket all here too. That's what we're about to do. So we're moving anteriorly, and if you move anteriorly, one of the things if you go look at your chicken bucket is you have infraorbital nerve and you have zygomatic nerve. Those are going anteriorly, and they come out of the infraorbital fissure. So we already took care of that. And then one thing that I added here, it may not be exactly anatomically accurate, but it's good for you to remember the chicken bucket. If you look at your chicken bucket, if you go superiorly, you're going to go through a sphenopalatine foramen. And sphenopalatine foramen is going to have your nasopalatine nerves. And so that, if you look at your chicken bucket, is going superiorly. So I just kind of drew it in there. That's why there's a question mark, but it's good to remember. So sphenopalatine foramen. And we already took care of zygomatic and infraorbital. Infraorbital is going to the front upper teeth, and then you have superior alveolar. Superior alveolar is going to the back upper teeth. So, if you just remember those, zygomatic, infraorbital, you can kind of picture again, the big picture here, 